Yo guys, what is going on? Got a Old Force and Mirage Galgamon deck profile for you guys. I like to call this deck Mirage Force, uh, but it is just a very fun and relatively budget deck that I kind of came up with. And the goal is to kind of set up your Old Force and your unblockable Mirage Galgamon and just hit your opponent multiple times relentlessly. And I think there is some kind of synergy, so let's go ahead and see how exactly they work together. So for the rookies, I am playing four copies of the promo Gomamon. This Gomamon is really fantastic, especially with the release of Bukamon in BT4. It basically guarantees uh, any time that you will attack, you get to resolve his once per turn effect. Whenever you trash a Digivolution card, gain one memory. So it's just very, very fantastic, especially with All Force. You're always going to be resolving either Bukamon's effect or some of the other guys um, that I've left in here. So then for the other rookies, I'm playing four copies of Gabumon just because he's a very good card to play. You have the trigger draw one. It's always nice in this deck. You're always trying to uh, draw many cards in your hand. There's a lots of draw cards in here so it helps with consistency um especially because sometimes when you're missing your combo pieces like your blue tamers and if you don't have an all fours in hand it can be really kind of hard to uh turn the game around in your favor and then the other rookies i'm playing two copies of galmon the digiburst digimon we are getting these in uh bt4 uh so he lets you add him back to your hand if he is discarded by digiburst and you are playing some digiburst digimon in this uh deck and then the last rookie I'm playing here is two copies of the starter deck Gabumon just to help with the source trashing. Again, this is a blue deck, so it is kind of, you know, like a source control deck to an extent. And this helps resolve Gomamon if you happen to have like two Digimon on field and you've got both these guys underneath it. It just helps with the source trashing. And just, of course, getting rid of, uh, you know, pesky inherited effects that you don't want your opponent to have. So that is it for the level threes. Only a 12 count, um, and I will get to why exactly that is in a second. But for the other uh, Digimon, for the level fours, I am playing four copies of your blocker. Grizzlymon, of course, even though this isn't uh, like an offensive deck, you still want to max out in your blocker. The blockers are not going away. They're still relevant. Um, so, you know, I am playing four copies of Grizzlymon. Pretty standard. And then now we are getting into the uh, kind of newer cards. So I'm playing four copies of Tobiumon. This, again, is a, one of the newer cards out of Great Legend. And he's a very, very powerful card because even though he's a vanilla, he is a three play level four as well as a one cost to digivolve so he's kind of like that numamon for blue so regardless of what you're doing if you're playing him if you're evolving him you're always going to get great value from it and hence why i think i don't really need to play more than 12 rookies because if you happen to have this guy in your hand it is okay to play him for a three cost and then for the other level fours i'm playing two copies of galgamon galgamon is one of those digiburst digimon i mentioned earlier and he lets you basically just trash two to draw one card which is a very fantastic effect again like I said, you're just trying to turbo through your deck and get your combo pieces and then just the one tech copy of Lobomon because you are playing a lot of blue tamers in this deck. And I know some people might say, hey, well, Lobomon conflicts with all force. Uh, less suspended tamers means, you know, less attacks for all force. However, there are times when you don't have all force. There are times uh, when you have a tamer that isn't suspended. So Lobomon can catch your opponent off surprise and I still think it is worth playing. For the level fives, I'm playing three copies of Mock Galgamon. He is an absolutely fantastic card, has two really great effects. So he's got the Digiburst 2 effect, of course, where you get to bounce back a level th 4 or lower Digimon on your opponent's side of the field. So this gets rid of uh, basically every commonly played blocker uh, that is level 4. And not only that, but he has an inherited effect where if you have a Tamer in play, give this Digimon 2,000 DP. So that synergizes super well with all fours, and hence in this deck, I'm actually not playing uh, Aero Vidramon because while jamming is a fantastic effect, putting all fours at 13,000 and then boosting him even more with something like Tai, you essentially have jamming already and this does get around blockers. It also helps trigger your Gomamon because um, when you do return something to the hand, trash you trash all the Digivolution cards so that can trigger your Gomamon plus one memory. Um, not four copies just because there's so many other really great level fives that am playing in this deck so I kind of, you know, was cutting on due to space reasons but I'm also playing Piranimon, two copies of this, which lets you actually trash the top Digivolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon. So that is not level restricted. It's not level four lower like Bukamon. It's just any Digimon. Um, and then he's just really good. He's also only a six to play. So if that comes up, if we, anytime you, you're breaking and you need to just play an ultimate to maybe get your all force out quickly, uh, you can definitely do that. 
and then two copies of Marine Chimeramon. Marine Chimeramon, I think, is a very underrated card. This guy lets you return one of your other Digimon to bounce back an opponent's Digimon without sources. So, so that is actually not level restricted. You can bounce back a level 6 or a level 7 as long as that Digimon does not have materials, and hence why I think a lot of blue decks would benefit from source trashing effects such as Mirage Gagamon, such as Piranimon, and even something like BT3, Anjumon, a starter deck, Gabumon, stuff like that. Uh, and then just to round off the ultimates, I'm playing one copy of Zudamon because I still do think his inherited effect uh, in tandem with all force is extremely powerful. And then of course the drawing too is always nice as well. So then for our level six lineup, I'm playing of course four copies of all force Vidramon. This is your boss monster. Of course you want to get him out with as many swings as possible, and you have many blue tamers to help him resolve this effect, gaining memory and swinging multiple times over your opponent's Digimon or attacking security for multiple checks is always just a very powerful effect so all force is just an awesome boss monster and then i think um this lineup is fine four and two two copies of mirage galgamon now again this is an all force based deck so i don't want to play any more than like five or six uh, level sixes and I think Mirage Galgamon like I've said in the past I don't really I really don't think this card is that good but it does have its place as an engine in an all force deck I think it can work out at times where you know you can you know chip away at your opponent's security with all force and then go in for the kill with something like Mirage Galgamon because he is actually unblockable his uh, like memory gaining effect is nice too um, I've tried to mitigate the like having to rely on your opponent have eight or more cards in their hand because uh, a lot of the gal cards like re rely on your opponent having a certain number of cards in your hand but you also have many effects in this deck like mirage gogmon like marine chimeramon that bounce back to the hand so there is that element of hand control but yeah i think a two mirage gogmon is just fine as a supplement to the all force and then just for one level 7, I am playing one copy of Omnimon. This is definitely not necessary. Like I said, if you want to make this a budget deck, uh, you could just cut this completely. But I do have this, so I thought I would include it anyways. And then for the Tamer lineup, I'm playing three copies of V Tamer Tai Kamiya. This guy is still really good. He lets you either draw a card or gain 1000 DP for the turn. So helping you beat over your opponent's pesky Digimon. Uh, for your Memory Tamer, I'm playing two copies of BT1 Matt Ishida. He is really good because he is actually a memory tamer that can suspend himself. So if you end up playing a blue Digimon from your hand, maybe something like a Tobimon or a Gabumon uh, from your hand, while all forces on the field, you can suspend him to uh, trash a material off of one of your opponent's Digimon. And then in the, you know, because you suspended him, all force will become unsuspended. So it's really good dual purposes in this deck. And then this last card, um, of course, you got to play because I am playing the Galmon package. Uh, I am playing two copies of Thomas H. Norsing. He's a really cool card uh, on play. You get to draw one card. So it's kind of like a Gabumon. He's a three cost, uh, but he's a tamer. Um, and then the other effect is that if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, you can suspend this tamer to su unsuspend one of your Digimons with Gal in it. So it helps uh, your Galmons attack multiple times. And the cool thing about him is that the way it's worded, the only condition on this card is that your opponent has to have eight or more cards. If you don't have a Galmon on field, you can still suspend him so long as your opponent has eight or more cards. So that works really well with all force. Being able to just suspend this um, to unsuspend all force is a really nice interaction. And then for the option cards, I'm playing three copies of Hammer Spark. Not much to say here. Hammer Spark is a staple and basically every blue deck, just a fantastic effect as well as a great security effect. And then two copies of Full Moon Blaster. I think this card, again, is a little bit underrated. Uh, if you don't know what this card does, you bet basically get to return one of your opponent's level five or lower. Digimon to the hand. Four of Scott, five costs, that's not too bad. It's got that rave victory effect. Um, but the kicker here is that if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, you can actually just return it to the bottom of the deck instead. So kind of like a mini Millennium or like a mini Absolute Blast before we get that card. And then its security effect actually just activates the main card effect. So you don't actually have to worry about like adding it to your hand and then playing it later. So I think that's really nice. So that rounds off the main deck at a 50 card count. And then for the Digi Eggs, I'm just playing four copies of Bukamon and one Demi Vimon. This is the um, when this Digimon's unsuspended. 
gain plus 1000 dp demi vimon but the real star of the show here is bukamon i think having a source trasher as a digi egg is just a, such a fantastic card um this i think this is going to be a staple in a lot of blue control decks like maybe when we get hexa blue in the tc and the digimon tcg um people will be running him with that because just being able to rip sources off of your opponent's digimon for free is always good and again this helps you consistently trigger your gomamon which is always nice so guys that is going to do it for this list let me know what you guys think down in the comments be sure to like subscribe all that good stuff but if you did enjoy go ahead and let me know what you think of this deck and what do you think about mirage gagamon as a card do you think he will see competitive play or do you think he is doomed to obscurity i'd like to know your thoughts anyways guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time